Hello, my name is Diana Fisher. We are faced with a growing number of systemic problems that we as a global population need to address. Global climate change, rising conflict due to human migration, increasing occurrences of human illness, reduction of availability of potable water, to name a few. As teachers and parents, we want to prepare our students, our children, with those analytical tools that will help them better understand the causes of these problems and allow them to develop and test potential successful policies that could mitigate the problems long term. We cannot do that within the current educational silos we use for teaching our students. Our students need a new language using stocks and flows to help them represent and analyze and improve upon the multidisciplined complex systems they will face as adults so they can build better models of how the world actually works. This should start at least at age four. In February 2023, some of the leaders in the Systems Thinking and Education Group in Turkey and I wrote an article entitled Systems Thinking Activities Used in K-12 for up to two decades, which was published in the journal Frontiers in Education. I will present some example activities from this article. Just for some quick background, this slide includes the definition of systems thinking and the seven categories of systems thinking concepts that most closely align with our approach. I will not read all of this information. Since this is a recorded presentation, you can go back and look at this slide in more detail at a later time if interested. I want to spend more time on the actual systems thinking lessons teachers have used in the classroom. These are the tools teachers have used in systems thinking lessons. There's a lot of information here and I do not want to explain each tool. However, the underlined tools are the ones you will see in this presentation. Behavior over time graphs are used with students as young as four years of age. In the early ages, these graphs are always associated with storybooks they have read. For very young children, pictures from each part of the story are used to represent the progression of time on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, pictures like a face that is frowning, a face that is neutral, and a face that is happy can be used to indicate comparative values, a little, an average amount, a lot, of a characteristic of a main character in the story, that is, courage or happiness over time. Students place a dot on the graph for each grid position. Older primary students can use causal links to represent relationships between system components, eventually closing the loop to, to create feedback diagrams. Color, rather than a plus or a minus, is preferred for identifying polarity for younger students. Children as young as five years old can start using very simple stock flow representations of the system they are studying using pictures to help identify those elements that cause a stock to increase or decrease over time. Then, starting in middle school, students can begin working with free dynamic system dynamic modeling software to create simple simulations they can execute and whose output value over time they can analyze. These are the four, four tools that we use to build system dynamics models. The stock is an accumulation representing a main concept or variable in the model that we want to track over time. The flow represents the rate at which the stock value is changing. Converters hold constant values or simple arithmetic combinations of model components. The connector indicates the influence of one model component on another. It sends numerical information from one model icon to another. I will show you three examples of S systems thinking lessons used with students ages four to nine. 
a storybook written in Turkish preschool by Turkish preschool teacher Uslam Orkun involved frogs making noise in a pond near some homes, annoying the homeowners. You can see the behavior over time graphs made by four, five, and six year old students. You can also see the pre made stock flow structures students use to add their information via pictures and other systems thinking tools the teachers use to help students understand the story. Some kindergarten teachers have a different student count the number of children in the class each day and place a mark on a graph showing the number of students in the class over the school week. Then she has a student connect the dots. Now we know the curve should be dashed, but the teacher allows a solid curve at this level. The teacher then asks the students why the graph decreases or increases on different days. In grade four, students in a math class were given one of four parts of a cut apart stock flow diagram describing the water in dams in their country. Students are to reassemble the stock flow diagram and then calculate the values that should replace each of the question marks in the diagram. Three lessons look used by Turkish middle school students are shown next. In grades six through eight, the human body system is studied. Here, the general human circulatory system stock flow diagram is developed with the students. The coloring helps the lesson by showing that the blood rich with oxygen, red, exits the lungs and eventually the oxygen is consumed as the body operates so the oxygen depleted blood blue returns to the lungs to get more oxygen. The diagram is expanded as students learn more in grades 7 and 8. An 8th grade teacher used this model to help guide discussion about wealth in different countries around the world and the amount of pollution they emit. The model is set up to show results from about 30 countries. In some countries, wealth has increased, but emissions have decreased. Again, in eighth grade, teacher Sena Degirmenzi used this stock flow simulation to help her science students better understand the relationship between force position work and transformation of energy for an object moving in one direction. Lessons will be shown from eight different disciplines for high school. Since the current state of education retains siloed disciplines, the examples shown here were used within those separate disciplines. Once students learn core discipline concepts, representing them using stocks and flows, students can easily add appropriate concepts from other disciplines to their models. In mathematics, one effective way to use system dynamics modeling is to help students increase their understanding of functions. Studies in the U.S. indicate that students possess weak understanding of functions. Research indicates that mapping diagrams provide a rich foundation for understanding functions. A new representation for some core functions studied in algebra and precalculus provides not only a different representation that is more visual for the functions, but bases the new representation on the rates of change for each function, a very important concept in calculus. The structure or blueprint for each function helps describe why the function behavior makes sense. That is, constant flows create linear stock behavior, proportional flows create proportional stock behavior, etc. Each system dynamics modeling icon uses full words or phrases in their name, making it easier to remember what each part of the model represents. And it has been my experience with students that they have a much easier time translating word problems that describe dynamics to the stock flow model structure. Once students learn about linear and exponential model structures, they can start putting those structures together to study new problems they could not study with equations at this level. I have used medication models in my algebra classes for many years. 
students really like them. This slide shows the corresponding placement of numbers for the equation and stock flow representation for, five, for the five function types. Consider an emergency room problem. The students are told they are medical doctors working in an emergency room and a patient comes in who needs immediate medical attention. The student, as the doctor, decides to connect this patient to an IV drip that will supply a constant amount of therapeutic drug per minute. This person, the doctor estimates, will metabolize the drug at a specific rate per minute. The doctor wants to determine the pattern of the drug level in the body over 24 hours. The question is whether the patient will stay within the therapeutic range for the drug given in this problem. I wanted students to gain a better understanding of the difference between linear and exponential growth over time, so I developed a lesson I called the Malthus problem based on a prediction by the British minister Thomas Malthus in the early 1800s. He said people were going to run out of food if the, in the future because population grows exponentially, but food production grows linearly. I wanted my high school algebra students to build this model so they could understand better how Malthus could make such a claim. This problem combines math, social science, biology, and psychology. The students built the model in stages and eventually realized that food production would ideally stabilize population growth if the feedback amount using amount of food per person was analyzed to create policies to modify population growth as the food supply reached capacity. This historical event caused a reindeer population to collapse due to lack of food. No predator was on the island to control the reindeer population growth. Students built this model in stages. Not only is it important for students to build each model in stages, but it is important to regulate the sequence of models that they build so each new model adds just a few new model ideas. Often in an algebra class, we use separate sinusoidal equations to capture the potential oscillation caused in predator-prey interactions because the closed form equations are too complicated for algebra students to represent the actual interaction between the two populations in the system. But using stock flows, stocks and flows, students actually can build a two population model and represent how each population influences the other. This lesson was done toward the end of the school year and students were able to build this model in a 45 minute class period. The final analysis in the lesson was completed at home, finding the closed form equations for the oscillating rapid popu rabbit population. I always tried to connect the stock flow representation to the traditional mathematics the students were learning whenever I could. Students and many adults are notoriously poor at reading and interpreting graphs. System dynamics modeling has as one of its main analytical techniques to interpret the graphical output of models multiple times as models are built, modified, and tested. Students get lots of practice reading and interpreting graphs. Moreover, students often are required to view flow graphs on the same grid as stock graphs to help explain stock behavior. This correlational graphical analysis is a core concept in calculus and very important for understanding dynamic phenomenon. In teaching first year calculus, my students were required to translate initial value problems, problems described by giving the initial value for the main variables and giving differential equations for how those variables changed over time into stock flow models. This slide shows the IVP for the traditional SIR, spread of an epidemic, susceptible, infected, recovered population often used in calculus. It shows the direct translation of the differential equations and initial value variables to the equivalent stock flow representation.
but the stock flow diagram can be enhanced greatly by renaming each icon so it is easier to interpret and by showing the feedback in more complete and understandable loops. Students add quarantine and vaccination components. This problem involved math, biology, and psychology. There are so many wonderful applications of system dynamics modeling to biology. John Darko, a high school biology teacher, has built and made many of his system dynamics models and simulations available for free. These are some of the system dynamics model models available on his website. He also has many simulations on the exchangeicsystems.com website that are available. System dynamic models are also very useful to capture environmental science concept. This model is a small extension of the reindeer population model shown in a previous slide. It is a general structure for any population that depends on a renewable resource. A new book now called Now What? A Call to Action by Alan Tukotsky is a very useful resource for teachers interested in using systems thinking tools to help students understand global climate change. Alan also co-wrote co the book The Shape of Change, a wonderful book to use with middle school students to introduce small system dynamics scenarios and models. Both books are available at the Creative Learning Exchange. The human body is full of feedback systems and as such is an ideal subject for building and using system dynamics models to study those systems. This glucose insulin model was used with groups of high school students to study this homeostatic process. The original model was created by Matthew Halbauer, Rebecca Niles, and Tad Sudnik. Physics is a fertile subject for having students build and use system dynamics models. Many small models have been built by a few high school physics teachers. David Hamilton, a previous high school physics teacher at Franklin High School in Portland, Oregon, built this simulation to help his students better understand the dynamics involved in changing position, velocity, and acceleration during skydiving. diving. Here is the model behind his simulation interface. The core of the model is the quadratic stock flow diagram shown earlier in this presentation. People might think that literature does not have the potential to be enhanced by having students build stock flow models. Not only is that a mistake, but the Systems Thinking and Education group in Turkey have shown it adapts well to use with young children's literature. Tim Joy was an English teacher, an English literature teacher at LaSalle High School near Portland, Oregon. The story, Lord of the Flies, describes the descent into savagery of a group of children who are stranded on an island with no adults. He used this model with his students to have them decide which part of the story contributed to the increased level of savagery of the children on the island. Some students argued that the flow should be a by-flow, that the children could lose some of their savagery and return to a higher level of civility. They extracted text in the story to support their claims. The discussion was very stimulating and engaging. Franklin High School in Portland, Oregon serves a middle to lower socioeconomic level of families. One way students have been encouraged to learn productive family skills and foster aspirations for higher education is to offer family studies classes for interested students. The following two simulations were used in this class. Some high school teachers, Bob Allnut, Jennifer Harvester, and Joan Miller, built this simulation in 1994 during a system dynamics three-week teacher training in system dynamics modeling. The first simulation had students estimate the number of years they would spend in school. Then they indicated the starting salary they might expect based on the special training they might receive. The second part of the simulation had the students decide on identifying monthly expenses if they wanted to have children and what age they might want to have children. Then the simulation was 
ex executed to see how well their level of income would provide support for their families over the lifetime of the student. The focus was on the value of long-term planning to help short-term decision-making. The experience that greatly enhanced my opinion about the virtues of using the system dynamics modeling approach with students occurred when I saw what students could produce when given the freedom to choose a dynamic problem that interested them for which they could create an original model, write a technical paper explaining their model, and present their model to an audience. I wanted to prepare students to identify and analyze problems in the world from which they could gain understanding by building and analyzing system dynamics models. I wanted them to develop skill in model building, in analyzing model design and output and feedback, and in explaining what they learned. So I designed a secondary school system dynamics modeling course that I taught for 20 years. One of the most important lessons I included in my system dynamics modeling course was to show students how to translate a system dynamics problem found in a news article into a stock flow diagram. Students listed the important variables. They built the structure of their model by hand, and they also sketched out the feedback. Students indicated that it was one of the most important lessons in preparing them to do their final project. I'm going to magnify this bottom part of the picture to let you see it a little better. I know it's blurry, but it's because I just used the previous picture to magnify it. But you can see the design of their model structure. You can see their feedback loop. They're doing behavior over time graphs. All of this was part of the lesson for analyzing an article in the news. I'm now going to show you some sample student original system dynamics models. This 18-year-old secondary school student, Harrison Cassidy, built this model to show the interconnection between the work a business needs to do the number of employees it needs to hire, and the satisfaction those employees feel based on the stress they feel due to whether they, there are enough workers to complete the jobs the company needs done. The model combines business psychology and math. Within his model, the students incorpor incorporated both information and material delays appropriately. This is a very high-level understanding for system dynamics modeling. He was able to start his model in equilibrium, and the model shows that if the work demand increased by 50% in the fourth week, worker satisfaction would start to decrease within until the company started hiring more people to deal with the extra workload. Two freshmen, ages 15 years, created this model about different ways to travel to, to work in Portland and used data from the Portland Transit Department. They did an excellent job of capturing the type of commuters we have in Portland and how the increase in traffic leads to longer commute times. This comment was written in a paper by one of my system dynamics modeling students. In other classes, I am often asked to posit logical solutions to problems or am given the solution reached by other people. Using models of complex systems, I can test out my own theories and confirm those of others instead of faithfully accepting them as fact. Where other classes ask me to memorize, this one dares me to explore. Here is a list of resources produced in the United States that are useful for teachers interested in using system dynamics in their curriculum. Please note that IC Systems is providing a free web-based site license of Stella Professional Online System Dynamics modeling software to all K-12 schools globally. This software is a fully functioning version of the modeling software. Thank you.